China, China, China. 我相信会的。为什么 ？China, China, China power. China is a country that gets the attention of everyone, no matter what it does. You have YouTube channels saying it's going to collapse every 30 days, and others saying China will become the next superpower in 30 days. But regardless of what you think, you can't deny the influence they've had on well, basically everything. China may be able to oppress Tibet and Hong Kong, but how dare they? With my Avengers, you see, China has been able to corner a lot of markets. You probably don't remember, but big actors used to say "free Tibet." But now that China has so much influence on the entertainment industry, nothing of that nature happens anymore. One thing, however, that they've struggled to fully control is the export of their own culture. China is so big that its own celebrities never have to leave the country in order to be super famous. Have you ever heard of Jaina? Probably not. Guess how many followers she has on Chinese. Twitter. Try 129 million. That's more than Kylian Mbappe, who has access to the entire football-watching world. While the Chinese government may be better than America when it comes to messing with the Avengers, they are dwarfed by America in terms of cultural output. If you were a successful e-celeb or regular celeb, would you rather live in China? <laughs> Or America. I know what 99% of people would choose. Basically, almost all famous people in China are Chinese. But what if I told you that there are Westerners that are exclusively famous in China, and you actually might know a few of them? Some who shill Chinese propaganda. And in today's world of digital news, it's kind of hard to tell which news is good and which news is bad. Which is why I have the perfect sponsor for this video, Ground News. Ground News is a website and app that gives readers a transparent way to read the news. They give you access to over 50,000 news sources from all over the political spectrum, which allows you to compare headlines to see who owns the source and where bias leans per article. For example, let's look at this story about China. Ground News shows me this is covered by 20. Nine news sources. You can even see the breakdown of the bias distribution and compare headlines by outlet. Look at how the left and right frame the exact same story. One of the best features is the blind spot feature, which shows underreported stories by both sides of the spectrum. I find a system like this takes the stress out of sensationalist news and helps get to the core of what's going on. If you use my link ground.news/ghostgum, you can subscribe for as little as one dollar a month for the pro plan, or take advantage of the holiday sale by subscribing to the. Vantage plan for 40% off, which gives you access to all the features like the blind spot feature I mentioned. Sponsors like these not only help me and the channel, but they help an independent platform like Ground News, who's trying to make news a little more transparent. As a move to make it look like their government is the best in the world and attract others to their culture, China gets Westerners to become brand ambassadors, influencers, musicians, and basically any public-facing job. In China, they're called bai houzu, or literally white monkeys. Despite the name, you can get a job if you're a non-white Westerner. You just can't be Chinese or any other type of Asian, for that matter. Companies in China will rent Westerners to promote themselves. But what are the qualifications for a job like the Western face? CEO of a Chinese tech company, maybe a master's degree, PhD. Well, apparently not much, because they don't care who you are, what your resume looks like, and even if you can speak English, you just have to be Western. It's surprisingly easy to get these jobs, as you'd imagine. I am extremely depressed.、Uh, I, I am morbidly obese. I have no references,、uh, no work history, no education. Should mention, I'm also a felon. I. Beat my ex-wife. That sounds fantastic. You're hired. Now let's say you're in Los Angeles trying to be an actor, but you suck at acting. You can just go over to China and be a bad actor because you speak English. As long as you're okay with playing dumb Americans with weird dialogue in movies. Yes, we all will, Edward. We all will. I will have you scalped. I will scalp you with my own hand. With no signs of our enemy, our pilot reported there was signal interference every time they flew over this area. Now this is on the lower end of the white monkey totem pole. If you're really lucky and your acting skills are even worse than this, companies will hire white monkeys basically to do nothing as some kind of status symbol. Hello, everybody. I am the engineer of Neo Dentech. We focus on how to make our SMT machines operate more efficiently. This is definitely what you want. I assure. Yeah. As a white monkey, you don't have to speak Chinese and shock people in your local Chinatown. Hell, it doesn't even matter if you speak English, like Richard here from England. I am Richard. 
from Angola, the European general again of the Ginger Boss. I am a very demanding person for food. Now, I am not American, so I can't pick this accent out. Can one of the Americans watching this video please tell me what state this guy might be from? Each box of K-Max is in the United States FDA GMP and USP certified. So yeah, it turns out Jeff from Rapid City, South Dakota, who barely graduated from high school, can pose as the head of an engineering firm in China. Also, his name isn't even Jeff, it's Jan, and he's from Branice, Poland, with an A2 level in English. I love these are also referred to as white monkey jobs because a monkey doesn't do anything other than sit there and attract attention. They require zero talent or skill. You just have to not be Chinese. But some of the funniest of these white monkey jobs are the e-celebs that got big on Chinese social media. Like this guy warning about the dangers of American fast food compared to Chinese fast food. This is your life. Or how about this Chinese guy giving Africans money and making them dance with happiness in a scripted video? I'm not sure if this is racist, but it feels racist. Now, if I wasn't sure about that last one being racist, this one certainly is. There is a whole economic side of this that's very complicated and ties into the Chinese real estate market, but who cares about any of that boring shit? The people in these videos, I guess, aren't really doing anything wrong most of the time. I don't blame them for making money for doing this because honestly, who cares? They're not harming anyone at the end of the day. But what if we take this and go one step further? Let's talk about e-celeb shills. Now, I'm not gonna talk about people who just do ads for Chinese companies or musicians who play shows in China. I've previously talked about John Cena in China and how he got in trouble for calling Taiwan a country. And he's not the only celebrity that's worked for China. I mean, Nicolas Cage has done the same. The point being, just because somebody works in China doesn't mean that they're a bad person. John Cena does objectively a lot of good things. Just acknowledging that Taiwan is a country is not one of those things. Taiwan is the first country. Oh my God, bro. Oh, hell. This is a big step further. I'm talking about people who are willing to sell their souls to promote Chinese propaganda. Now, you know how China has had many scandals, like meddling in other countries' elections and oppressing minorities with slave labor, allegedly? These things don't reflect well on a country on the international stage. The issue is, how do I make an authoritarian, oppressive state seem cool? Well, it's simple. By hiring a foreigner to explain how none of the bad things in your country are true. Like this guy who is clearly not reading off a script. This is Xizong, Tibet, and the Tibetan people. So, do Tibetan people want to be part of China? Yes, most of them do want to be part of China. One of my friends is actually from Tibet. Her grandma came to visit us in Beijing, and she told me a story about what happened before China took over in Tibet. Or this channel, a Latino guy whose whole YouTube footprint is talking about how China is more free than America and the West is lying. What's great about this channel is you won't find a single negative comment, and he literally hearts every single comment. So he must be a pretty liked guy. The amount of Western YouTube accounts who post Chinese propaganda is actually insane if you look for it. Basically, they're flown out to China, paid a bunch of money by the state to post videos saying how amazing China is, given a free trip around around the country and they get to become celebrities. All it took was saying how China is more free than America and denying an ethnic cleansing. That's not hyperbole. Literally, they will bring them out to Xinjiang, the region where said genocide is allegedly taking place, and get them to say, look how amazing it is. I don't see anything bad here. It's like people who go to North Korea and say, oh my God, look how clean it is. This country's not awful. But is this even worth it? I mean, how much money 
are you willing to take for you to basically be owned by a foreign government? Does anybody think that these guys will be speaking out against anything bad in China anytime soon? It just shows that if you're willing to denounce your country and chill for China, you can be famous. These foreigners can go to China with no skills, no education, and no knowledge of the Chinese language and make a name for themselves by not being Chinese. It's simultaneously stupid and dystopian. But the best example of a white monkey is the greatest musical talent in the history of YouTube. Austin Jones. Wait, no, he's in prison. Tabuscus. Wait, what the fuck? Bart Baker, who wrote incredible ballads like I'm a Stupid Ho and Call Me Maybe parody featuring Obama. This guy had over 10 million subs at one point and got hundreds of millions of views on his videos. You may wonder why he doesn't post anymore, and I'll tell you what, it's not because he wasn't getting views, because his last parody song got 16 million views. This guy was killing it in a genre that hasn't had any competition or been relevant for like 10 years. A man with this YouTube pedigree. What is he up to now? Well, it's this. This dude was one of the biggest parody song YouTubers at the time. Then all of a sudden, one day, poof, he's gone, stopped uploading. Three years after not posting a video on his main channel, he comes back to explain everything, in which he has a filter on his face. Just thought I'd note that. Look at the monitors in the background. He explains he started uploading videos on Du Yin, which is just Chinese TikTok, singing Chinese songs in English. He even gives us an example. <laughs> And he spends a lot of this video talking about crypto for some reason. Another thing that I'm obsessed with and that's been taking up almost all my time is crypto. I'm obsessed with crypto. It's really bad. Like I, I, like I have an unhealthy like obsession with crypto. Shilling crypto and his comeback video where he explains he is shilling for China. That's not concerning at all. Basically, poly bruh. Net Vice actually did some really good coverage of this, and in the video he says, a Chinese company reached out to him to get him to post on Chinese social media. Okay, so bye, hope you'll get well. I see you tomorrow, or maybe I'll see you tonight. I don't know, I'll see you in the morning, bye. Jesus. What's important to point out here is Bart talks about monetization on YouTube, which no doubt hit him hard when YouTube had the adpocalypse. That and parody songs not being as popular as they used to be. I guess from a purely financial standpoint, it makes sense. But let me ask you, how much money would you accept to make songs like this for a living? They basically had him become a slave to a Chinese social media company, and here is the result. It would be funny if it wasn't so sad. There's a huge difference between this and actors who do Chinese commercials or YouTubers who pander to a casual Chinese audience. These people are literally just monkey see, monkey do. They see what's on a paper given to them by the Chinese government, and then they do it. But what's wild about all of this is it works. I mean, you have people who hate the West so much that they believe China was justified in colonizing Tibet because they were savages. I don't think China is closer to fascism than America. Go ahead. Go ahead. Is, Tibet was literally a f***ing feudal uh, slave uh, mandate, uh, uh, it, like so autonomous China was, zone. China, China did them a favor. That was one. I mean, in America, when I say something like this, people get very upset. You know, we, we talk about the Dalai Lama saying, suck my tongue or whatever. But like, that's not far from the norm in fucking normal Tibetan no. existence before the Communist Party came in. And, so and China over. unilaterally took over Tibet, like these are their culture, 
they basically are trying to, you know, homogenize the culture. If your culture... They're it, trying to squell the religion and the, the, part, the identity. The if you want a first-hand perspective of these white monkey jobs, Lao Wai did a bunch of amazing videos on them, which led me down a huge rabbit hole and helped a ton for this video. So if you want more of a first-hand perspective from somebody who self-admittedly worked as a white monkey for a bit, go check out his videos. They're really good. If you're coming to me for advice, you're coming to the wrong person. But I will tell you, if you want to learn Chinese, don't learn learn it to end up like these guys. Learn it because you're interested in Chinese culture. And when this YouTube thing goes up in flames for me eventually, and you see me posting Chinese propaganda, just know it's all satire and I don't really mean any of it. Also, by the way, Tibetan food is actually so bomb. You guys gotta try this shit.